Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Weekly Report. Who's afraid of the Trump-Putin summit? President Trump's national security advisor, John Bolton, was in Moscow last weekend organizing what promises to be an historic summit meeting between his boss and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Bolton, who has for years demanded that the U.S. inflict pain on Russia and on Putin specifically, was tasked by Trump to change his tune. He was forced to shed some of his neoconservative skin and get involved in peacemaking. Trump surely deserves some credit for that. As could be expected, given the current political climate in the U.S., the neoconservatives have joined up with the anti-Trump forces on the left and U.S. client states overseas to vigorously oppose any movement toward peace with Russia. The mainstream media is, as also to be expected, amplifying every objection to any step away from a confrontation with Russia. Bolton had hardly left Moscow when the media began its attacks. U.S. allies are nervous over the planned summit reported Reuters. They did not quote any U.S. claiming to be nervous about They did speculate that both the U.K. and Ukraine would not be happy were the United States and Russia to improve relations. But why is that? The current Ukrainian government is only in power because the Obama administration launched a coup against it, the democratically elected president, to put U.S. puppets in charge. They're right to be nervous, and the British government is also right to be nervous. They swore that Russia was behind the poisoning of the scripples without providing any evidence to back up their claims. Hundreds of Russian diplomats were expelled from Western countries on their word alone, and over the past couple of months, each of their claims has fallen short. At the extreme of the reaction to Bolton's Russia trip, was the U.S.-funded think tank, the Atlantic Council, which is stuck in a 1950s time warp. Its resident Russia expert, Anders Aslan, tweeted that longtime Russia hawk Bolton had been captured by the Kremlin and must now be considered a Russian agent for having helped set up a meeting between Trump and Putin. Do they really prefer nuclear war? The experts are usually wrong when it comes to peacemaking. They rely on having official enemies for their very livelihood. In 1985, national security expert Zbigniew Brzezinski attacked the idea of a summit between President Reagan and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. It was demeaning and tactically unwise, he said, as reported at the time by the Washington Times. Such a meeting would only elevate Gorbachev and make him first among equals, he said. Thankfully, Reagan did engage Gorbachev in several summits, and the rest is history. Brzezinski was wrong, and the peacemakers were right. President Trump should understand that any move toward better relations with Russia has been already pre-approved by the American people. His position on Russia was well known. He campaigned very clearly on the idea that the U.S. should end the hostility toward Russia that characterized the Obama administration and find a way to work together. Voters knew his position, and they choose him over Hillary Clinton, who was also very clear on Russia, more confrontational and more aggression. President Trump would be wise to ignore the neocon talking heads and think tanks experts paid by defense contractors. He should ignore the never-Trumpers who have yet to make a coherent policy argument opposing the president. The extent of their opposition to Trump seems to be he's mean and rude. Let us hope that a Trump-Putin meeting begins a movement toward real reconciliation and a waif from the threat of nuclear war. Thanks for listening.